Good morning, friends, and welcome to our online Sunday liturgy, which during these days of Epiphany Tide, these Sundays after the Epiphany, we will be praying morning prayer right to with an act of spiritual communion for our Sunday online liturgy. Thank you for joining us. We are a YouTube premiere and we are shared onto Facebook. Please do take a moment to post a greeting, share a comment. Let us know that you are here with us this morning and know how grateful we are for your presence and your prayers among us. You may post those greetings on the YouTube comments or the Facebook comments. Let us begin our prayers and thank you again for praying with us. From the rising of the sun to its setting, my name shall be great among the nations. And in every place incense shall be offered to my name and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. 
For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Now, friends, we continue with this Sunday psalm and the readings and the canticles. The psalm of this Lord's Day is Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull, and stop their ears, and shut their eyes, so that they may not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and comprehend with their minds, and turn, and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people and the land is utterly desolate, until the Lord sends everyone far away, and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak, whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, and through which you also are being saved if you hold firmly to the message that i proclaimed to you unless you have come to believe in vain for i handed on to you as of first importance what i in turn had received that christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I work harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me, whether then it was I or they. So we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with Canticle 21, the Te Deum. You are God. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. 
We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. A reading from Luke. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, before we get into the homily today, I want to take a brief moment to help us set the stage for what we are about to hear. Oftentimes, almost always, what I preach in person and what I preach online go very easily in either venue, in either method of preaching and praying together. But this is one of those moments where I decided not to force the hand, but you will notice the homily for this Sunday, even in, in this online liturgy, is very much geared towards being together physically as well as spiritually being rooted and grounded in a specific place, within a holy house. These online liturgies are wonderful, and they give us a freedom that we do not otherwise have. And they have served a purpose well, and, and they will continue to do so. But one of the things we always need to be mindful of is the fact that the gospel is incarnational. The gospel unfolds in person, in place, in time. Most importantly, in community. Community in which we can see and touch and know others to be present. It doesn't mean this isn't community, by the way. This is still community. But it takes some faith to believe that, doesn't it? I cannot hear you. You cannot hear me. Well, no. You cannot hear others with us. There is an image that is in my mind as I'm 
thinking of, of this homily, and it will be one that is very much the central part of this homily. It is that great cloud of witnesses of which the epistle to the Hebrews speaks. That great cloud of witnesses that includes pillars of the scriptures that we have not known by sight, with whom we have little in common, but we do have some things. It includes persons that we know very well, some of whom are still with us. It includes persons that we know only because we are found in the same holy house that is our spiritual home and that of our spiritual community. So I encourage you as you listen to this homily to think of whatever place that is. The place where you were brought to faith and to community. The place where you are nourished. The place where you have been nourished. Picture yourself present in that place if only spiritual, spiritually surrounded by walls that if only they would, could talk and tell the stories of our fathers and mothers who have stood in that place before us, who have inspired us to walk by faith and trust that indeed Christ is among us and ever shall be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From now on, you will be catching people. These are the words of Jesus for blessed Peter. Following Peter's sense of unworthiness before Jesus, after he submitted to the Lord's command to cast the net into the waters, the very waters in which he and his companions had fished all night without success. In this moment of submission, Peter caught an abundance of fish. That catch was so great, we are told, that the boats were sinking from the catch. Make no mistake about the fact that Jesus had something far greater in mind for Peter than simply being able to catch so many fish. Jesus is redirecting Peter from things familiar to things unknown. Peter will now be a fisher of men and women. I imagine in my mind that Peter must have been overwhelmed at that call. I envision him thinking, and how exactly am I going to do that? This call to be a fisher of men and women is extended to more than Peter alone. This is the task given to the disciples, renewed in them as the apostles in the light of the resurrection, in the moment of the ascension, empowered in them through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at the first Pentecost. It is the charge given to the baptized in every generation of the church, to all of the baptized, to the whole body of Christ in the world. Today, friends, this gospel is a reminder that we are among those who have been called to be fishers of men and women. Today, here again, Jesus calls out to us, directing that from now on, you will be catching people. If we take seriously our mission and ministry in the world in obedience to Jesus, in the place instead of the Christ and in the power of the Spirit we received in baptism, our response should be like Peter's own reaction. How exactly are we to do that? gospel gives us the answer in the witnesses, the countless pillars from the scriptures who exemplify a life of faith. We know of them and their stories. 
I do not wish to take away the significance of their stories. Let's be honest, however. Do we really know these great pillars of the scriptures? We do know, however, that in our own lifetimes, we have been blessed by great men and women who have brought us to Jesus, to the waters of baptism, to the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation, to the holy scriptures that contain all things necessary for salvation, to the life of faith that is rooted in our commitment to individual and communal prayer. Some of them are still among us in this life. Some of them are now numbered in the great cloud of witnesses spoken of in the epistle to the Hebrews. Wherever they are found, they continue to inspire us, as do those witnesses of faith whose connection to them for us is simply the sacred house of prayer in which we are found at prayer, which they in their own day and generation prayed. As I think of them, I think of the Apostle Paul and his words for the church. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you. What Paul received and what Paul passed on is nothing less than the knowledge of Jesus Christ. What we have received from those who brought us to the faith and whose presence and prayers have sustained us in our journey of faith is nothing less than the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Question before us, brothers and sisters, then, as we remember the charge to be fishers of men and women ourselves, is simply this. Have we handed off to others what we have received from others? Are we willing to continue to give what we have received until we are numbered among the great cloud of witnesses? The first and greatest way in which we pass on what we have received is by applying the gospel in the world around us. As we pray and prepare to draw near to the bread of heaven, remember the wisdom that we become what we eat. In this holy house, we partake of the sacred body and precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we partake of Christ, we become like Christ. It is through our participation in the sacrifice of the Eucharist that we become the body of Christ, given to the world for the salvation of the world in the name of Jesus. Nourished by the blessed sacrament of the altar, we can indeed love God and love our neighbors in such a way that our deeds convey the beauty of our faith. One of the greatest quotes of the church, one that I have happily shared many times, is this wisdom. Preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. There are indeed times when words are not needed. Only, friends, let us remember that there are times when words are absolutely required. Words shape our prayers and our faith. Words shape our whole lives. The word is so significant that when Jesus broke into our midst, he did so as the eternal word of God. We use words all the time. Often our words are dedicated to things that are of much lesser significance than our faith. How easily do we enter into conversations, even with complete strangers, on the weather? How freely do we talk about things around us that are popular topics, especially when we suspect that even the stranger among us may perhaps be interested in these very topics. And if we are honest with ourselves, how many of those discussions are truly memorable in that they transform lives, build relationships, and reveal hope and joy beyond measure 
that is stronger than fear and death. How long has it been since we shared the story of our faith as the hope that is in us with a complete stranger? I think of a conversation on an airplane years ago between a brother priest and a young girl that began with the young girl asking things like if he ate his breakfast that day, and if he brushed his teeth that day, before finally asking the great question, do you love Jesus? The little girl did not know she was speaking with a priest. He was not wearing his collar that day. Moments afterwards, the cycle began again as the young girl asked the man, Ask the man next to him the very same set of questions. By the way, that third question, do you love Jesus? Brought forth a pastoral discussion that the man sitting next to the priest desperately needed to have that very day. Brothers and sisters, if we are to indeed be fishers of men and women who make Christ known, we should be as willing to talk about our faith as we are to talk about the weather, even with strangers. And if this sounds overwhelming, remember that it is here, in the fellowship of prayer around word and sacrament, that Jesus is strengthening us to go forward into the world, to pass on what we have first received. May Christ give us the strength to share our faith and to trust that God can do miraculous things among us and through us that amaze us to the same degree to which Peter himself was amazed and humbled in the presence of Jesus. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We profess our faith in the words of the baptismal creed of the Church, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, friends, as we prepare to enter into our time of intercession and thanksgiving, as we offer our prayers, we remind you that if there is someone on your heart for prayers for healing or prayers for the repose of the newly departed, and you suspect that they are not yet on our parish's prayer list, I invite you and encourage you to add their names to the comments, either on YouTube or Facebook, along with the intention for which prayers are desired and know that by doing so, you are adding them to the prayers this morning. You may also email those prayer requests to me at fathertimothya at gmail.com, F-A-T-H-E-R-T-I-M-O-T-H-Y-A at gmail.com. The Lord be with you. 
Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us by your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For just an Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Kevin, our own bishop, for this gathering and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison, especially those whom we hold in our hearts. 
those found on our parish's prayer list. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God, or a deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find and be found by Him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially those whom we hold in our hearts and those found on our parish's prayer list. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty God, you have promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in your Son's name. Mercifully incline your ear to us who have now made our prayers and supplications to you. 
and grant that those things which we have faithfully asked according to your will may effectually be obtained to the relief of our necessity and to the setting forth of your glory through jesus christ our lord amen The peace of the Lord be always with you. Now, friends, as we offer our morning prayer, our Sunday liturgy on love, we also pray an act of spiritual communion, remembering the many and various ways through which Christ, our great high priest, and the true bishop and shepherd of our souls, feeds us and strengthens us for our journey of faith, our discipleship as the followers of Jesus that God has made us to be. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We pray together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives 
by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, friends, for joining us and praying with us on this Sunday morning. If you have not done so yet, please do take a moment to post a greeting, share a comment. Let us know that you have been with us and prayed with us. If there are persons that you wish to add to our prayer list, Email those to me at fathertimothya at gmail.com, F-A-T-H-E-R-T-I-M-O-T-H-Y-A at gmail.com. Remember that we have daily prayers in my YouTube channel right here. Every evening, Sunday evening through Friday evening at 6.30 p.m. And every morning... Monday morning through Saturday morning at 8.30. I encourage you and invite you to join us for our daily prayers. A blessed Sunday to you, dear friends. And I look forward to praying with you again soon.